Hello everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be covering policies inside Laravel. So on the previous episode, I showed you guys how to use gates inside Laravel. It was basically an easy, convenient way to define permissions on your applications. You could use them as a simple way to manage roles or also another way to, you know, define permissions. You could easily use them inside your blade files as well as in your routes and prevent users from performing certain actions. And gates are great. They work very well and easy to use. However, it starts to become a bit difficult if you have a more complex application or you have a lot of models, okay? So if you want to have different permissions for every single action on a model, for example, in our case, we didn't have any permission for showing, viewing, or even uh, creating an idea. What if you do have permissions for those, right? And then you have the exact set of permissions for like 10 other models on your application it's going to get a little bit difficult to manage with gates, right? So you need to think about how to organize these gates. Do you want to put all of them in the art service provider or do you want to, you know, uh, define them or register them on different files? Basically, this is where policies come into play. They give you a convenient and easy way to manage all your permissions for your models, okay? So I don't want to go too much into the theory. Let's see how they work in action. I think that's the best way to learn about them. So let's go ahead and recreate what we did on the previous episode. Basically, two permissions, one for deleting and editing our ideas using policy. So the first step is we need to create a policy and we can use uh, PHP Artisan to easily create it. So let's go ahead, type in PHP Artisan, make like all the commands we use so far, policy. And then by default, if you just call this, it will create an empty policy for you. So in order to make life a little bit easier, you can go ahead and say dash dash model and give it a model name. You also need to give it a name actually for the policy. So in this case, I'm going to be using the Laravel convention, which is model name followed by a suffix of policy. So in this case, it's going to be our model name idea and then policy at the end. Okay, so that's going to be the general uh, convention or naming scheme inside Laravel. Now you can use other naming schemes as well, but it has one extra step. I'll cover that in a second. So that's going to be our policy name. And then we're going to say dash dash model and pass in our model in case. In this case, it's going to be idea model. Okay. So let's hit enter. A lot of will go ahead or artisan will go ahead and create this policy for us. It's going to be inside. There's going to be a new folder of policies under our app folder, right? So it's already organized for us. We don't need to worry about them. And then inside here, we get a file like this. It's just a simple a class and then with a bunch of functions that correspond for every action you could potentially have on your model. So we have view any, uh, this is kind of like the index page. We have view, which is like more like a show page. Then we have create. This is more like uh, edit and create page, right? Then we have update, which is like more of delete and update pages, right? On our controllers. And then we have delete, like destroy. And then we have restore and force delete. So we have basically a corresponding function or method for every single type of permission you could have for a model. We can add more as well if you guys would like, but these are the default ones that comes in. And as, as I said, these are kind of like equivalent to our controller methods, right? So we have show, uh, let me open up the policy. In this case, the name is view, but it's kind of same as show, right? So viewing a single uh, idea, right? And then, you know, same for all of them, okay? So what you can do is we can go ahead and move the logic we had inside our gates. Basically, if we could, for example, view or edit or delete an idea, we could then go ahead and move that inside a policy. So let's go ahead and do it. Now, these methods, uh, they obviously, usually most of them pass in the logged in user. Actually, all of them do. And then they expect a Boolean in return, right? So if you return true, that means this current user, which is passed in, it's in 99% of the time, it's going to be logged in user has the ability to basically view all the users, all the ideas in like a table format. So if you had an index page, then view basically can this user view this individual idea or not. Same for create, update and delete. Now, if you guys are not using, for example, some sort of policy method, you can go ahead and delete them. So in this case, I don't need these. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. We don't need one for create. Any user can create an idea. So we don't need this one as well. Okay, and then uh, we also don't need restore and force delete. If you had soft delete, then, but it's going to be for a different video. So now we have two methods, one for updating and one for deleting. So it's exactly identical to our uh, basically gates, right? So let's go ahead and write the logic and let's see how it works. So I'm going to return. So what we want to do is basically admins can update 
a post or the owner of that idea. Okay, so in this case, I can say if user is an admin. So if we have an admin account or the user is basically the owner of an idea. And we can do a super uh, simple check over here and say basically if user is an admin or uh, the user ID is exactly the same as the owner of that idea, right? And we're going to have the exact same logic for the delete as well. Now, it's not going to be always the, the case, okay? So if you have an admin panel or, you know, a more complex application, you know, some users may be able to update, but they are not able to delete, okay? So in this case, it's going to be very simple for us. Obviously, both users can do that. Okay, so now that we have this, guys, we have defined our policies with basically who can do what. Exact same thing we had inside our gates. So now I can go ahead and actually delete our gates because we no longer need them. We are using our policies. Now, the way policies work is actually identical to gates, okay? So let's come over here. So what we can do is now we can go ahead and use this exact same authorize method, just change things a little bit. So the way uh, policies work is inside this authorized method, you need to pass in the policy method name. So in our case, we defined update. So I can go ahead and just put in update here. Let's do for the edit and update. So you put the action name, okay, for update. And then you pass in your uh, model class or your model, okay? That's all we have to do. And then Laravel will automatically using the type of the model, find the policy, and then look for this update method on it and check it against you know this action that's it that's all we have to do so i'm going to go ahead and also update this method this is also going to become update and then we need to do the exact same thing for destroy as well so this one technically should be delete and that's all we have to do so now we have basically transitioned from using gates to using policies uh, for our idea controller so that's all we have to do so let's go ahead and we also need to change a few more things inside our blade file. So if I go back and I reload our application, obviously everything still works. But right now I'm logged in as an admin. I'm not able to see the edit or delete buttons. If I scroll down, so our uh, blade file is basically broke because it's still using the gates we defined on the previous episode. So let's go ahead and also find the idea card. So what we can do here, previously we were using this can directive inside our blade file. So now basically instead of this idea edit, we can go ahead and say update. Exact same thing we are doing inside our controller. Like the use case is exactly identical. The action name inside our policy, which is update, followed by the model itself. So here it's going to be can, the action name, update, and then the model itself. That's it. I'm going to save this, go back, do a quick reload. And as you can see now, it is indeed working. I'm able to edit and also delete. And because I'm an admin, and we can check that I'm an admin because it says admin dashboard, I'm able to see everyone's ideas, right? So let's log out and log in as a regular user. I believe Alex is not a regular user. Yeah, so coding flick in this user is not an admin. So if I come down, as you can see, we don't have the edit or delete on other people's ideas, right? So functionality exactly identical to the previous episode, however, with policies, it's a little bit more organized and also, you know, it's easier to manage if you have a lot of models. So for a simple application like this, you don't even need to use gates or policies. We could have, you know, just done a simple check like we'd had initially. But as your application grows in scale, then policies become very useful because you can go ahead and it's very well organized and you will have a policy for every single model on your application. So that's the basics of policies. And usually, guys, if you're working on an application, you're going to either use policies or gates or like a mix of both. So in this case, I'm still going to be using this uh, admin gate to easily check if a user is an admin on my routes as well as on my blade files. But then for every everything else, I'm going to go ahead and use policies. So that's the mix. We're basically using a mixture of both. So now that I have covered this, guys, I want to also mention one more thing. And that's regarding the naming of your policies. Okay, so by default, I mentioned that if you use the lot of a policy name, which was basically our model name, followed by policy, lot of it will automatically detect the policy. But if you decide to go ahead and use a different naming scheme, maybe instead of idea policy, you go with idea, I don't know, permissions, whatever you like, use a different name, then Laravel actually doesn't know how to find this class, okay? So in those cases, you need to tell Laravel where your permission file is located, or maybe you're, you know, you're kind of trying to modularize your project or whatever, and you have your policies or whatever defined on a completely different folder. It might not even be inside your app folder. 
So there is a way to actually tell Laravel where to find it. So in those cases, uh, let me also change this. So I'll also make this be idea permissions. Okay. So I have changed this and if I go back, it should actually stop working. As you can see, I'm not seeing the edit anymore. So because I have changed the, uh, the policy name, Laravel is not able to find it. So in those cases, if you use a different naming scheme, you need to go inside your auth service provider file over here. And you might have seen it actually if you were kind of working with this file before. There is a property of policies and it says a model to policy mapping for the application. So in this case, you need to basically say what policies should be used for our idea class. So this is how it works. You use your idea model and you pass in the class and then you tell it, okay, uh, what class or which class should be used as a policy. In this case, it's going to be idea uh, permissions class. So if you decide to use a different naming scheme than the default Laravel naming scheme, you need to go ahead and define it inside these policies. So if I go back and I reload now, as you can see, our view and edit button are working again. So that's just something to be careful if you decide to use a different name and for some reason it's not working, this is why. You need to come here and add it to this policies uh, property variable here, okay? Now in my case, I like the default Laravel names. I think it's actually very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, idea policy, same over here. I'm gonna return this back to idea policy. All right, very good. So that's it. And now that I'm using the default Laravel convention, I no longer need this, so I can go ahead and delete it. And of course, if I reload and I come back, uh, our application is still working and I'm able to perform actions as well, okay? So that's it guys for basics of policies inside Laravel. Now you don't have to use policies. You can you know, create your own implementation of policies. It's just a convenient way that Laravel provides for us for managing permissions. And however, it's still good to know because certain packages such as Laravel Nova use policies under the hood to control, for example, what pages are visible by you know, which admin. So it's still good to know them a little bit but you don't have to use them. Now, before I end today's video, guys, I would like to fix one more issue, which was pointed out by you guys uh, to me. And that is, if you are logged into the system, we actually are still able to view our login and logout, uh, logout, login and register pages. So if I go and I manually type in the login page, we are able to see it, even though I'm already logged in. Now, this isn't really a, a behavior we expect, right? I'm also able to register. So there is an easy way of fixing this. We can use our middleverse. Okay, so let's go ahead, open up our route file. I'm gonna go ahead and say web.php. Now for our authentication routes, we are using auth.php. So let's open that one instead. So what we can do guys is we can go ahead and pass in a guest middleware to all of these routes. And a guest middleware is the opposite of the auth middleware. So on all of our routes, we were using this auth to kind of let a lot of all know that this should only be accessed when we are logged in, there is kind of the opposite of this, which is the guest, right? So if the user can only view them if they are not logged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a route group here. Uh, we haven't used any of them in a while. So I'm gonna say middle, where, and then in this case say uh, guest. So we're going to use the guest middleware. And of course we need to get a closure. So I'm gonna basically move all of these guys for our login, register, and you know all those things inside our route group. So we don't need to manually keep defining the guest middleware. So let's go ahead, test it out. Let's see if it works. I'll do a logout, and it's telling us not found. So it is working. However, we shouldn't be getting not found, right? If I try to access the login page. So let's take a look. If you guys uh, look at the URL at the top, it's actually sending us, redirecting us to slash home. So that's the behavior of this uh, guest middleware. It re redirects you to your application homepage. Now by default, that is going to be slash home. So there is an easy way of changing this. We need to go ahead and take a look at under our route service provider. And there is a variable of home here, basically a property of home. So this is where this is defined. So that's the guest middleware basically redirects you to this uh, route here. And if you're using a lot of a breeze or jet stream, uh, this is also the route you're redirected after logging in. So we need to change this. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to our root folder, okay? So that's it. That's all we have to do. Let's try again. I'll go back and I'll try to access the login page again. Let's see if it works. And as you can see, if I try to access login, it just sends me back to the dashboard page, which makes sense, right? If I'm already logged in, uh, I shouldn't be able to log in again. Same for the register page as well. 
as you can see. So now we have one more issue as well, which I like to fix. And that is we have the ability to log out when we are not logged in. So for this one, I'll just go ahead and give it the auth middleware. So we are only able to log out when we are logged in. And that should also fix that issue. Now, this isn't a massive problem, but still uh, it's good to fix. Obviously, you don't want that on a production level application. So thank you for pointing that out, guys. And I believe we are done for today's episode. So we covered how to use policies. You can create a policy file and then just name it as your model name followed by the policy suffix. And after that, you can use them either on your controllers or your blade files using the same syntax we covered for gates. Okay, so for controllers, you can go ahead and do something like this. This authorize and then followed by the action name and the model. And then on your blade files, you can go ahead and use can a directive to easily check if the user has permission to perform some action. So that's it, guys. Hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, make sure you like the video and subscribe if you're new to if you are new to the channel. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.